Hi guys, thanks for coming to check out this video where I'm about to set up the remaining weekly spreads in my journal for the month of July in Greece themed. Now Greece has been awesome and I've really enjoyed visiting there in this summer vibrance while I'm experiencing the drab cold winter here in Perth. Um, it was an exciting week for me because I got uh, finally hit 20,000 subscribers on the channel so thank you so much for that and as a special thank you I am next week going to be putting out a little bit of a different kind of video so make sure you come back for that and there will be a giveaway on there as well so come back next week um, or if you're not subscribed subscribe so you can get notified of when I put that video up and so right now we are about to choose the countries for the month of August can you believe it um, thank you Greece you were awesome I loved exploring you and one day I will explore you in real life um, and Turkey and Bosnia I'll pop back into the jars after I've made the selections so let's get started Okay, giving them a good shake, shaking all around, shuffling through, let's see what we get. Now these are the countries with 30 million and above in population, the big guys. Okay, we have one, we have one, we have India. Now I know a lot of you want to see India, I would love to explore India, that is a great choice. Okay, now on to number two, these are the medium countries, so between 8 million and 30 million in population, so I'm shuffling it all about and we have one we have Dominican Republic now I don't know much about Dominican Republic but I love to say it and I'd like to explore it so if you want to see Dominican make sure you comment down below now the last one is the population under 8 million so the little guys giving them a good rattle no peeking and I have one I have one we have Albania now, I don't really know much about Albania, but I'm keen to learn. If you want to see more, then vote for that one. So we have our three choices. They're very good ones. We've got India, Dominican Republic, and Albania. So leave me a comment with which one you want to see down below. And for now, we'll get on with the Greece Weeklies. Okay, so the very first page for these weekly setups, I decided I wanted to do another spot in Greece that I would love to visit. As I'm sure you're aware, I'm spoiled for choice in Greece. There are so many places to explore and visit. So one of my personal faves is Mykonos. Um, now I've heard of Mykonos many times in movies and the pictures I've seen have just always been really awesome to look at. And the reason for that I think is these unique windmills that are found in most photos that I saw. Mykonos has 16 windmills and they were mostly built by the Venetians back in the 16th century uh, but they continued being built until the 20th century and were originally used to mill wheat but they uh, have not been in use since the 20th century. So now they're just this um, beautiful iconic emblem of Mykonos itself and one of them is actually transformed into a museum. So I definitely want to see these guys in the flesh. I just think they're really beautiful and they make such a nice little addition to the skyline of Mykonos and apparently you can see them from pretty much every point along the coast of Mykonos as well so very very cool the population of this island is twelve and a half thousand people uh, but the tourism there is insane and it gets two million visitors per year so that would get one busy little island now something I wanted to do on this page is rather than just having the scene shot of a scenery of the windmills, I thought it would be cool to include one of the things that is iconically Greek to me, and that is the dance that we probably have heard of around the world called Zorba's Dance. Um, and Zorba's Dance had quite a history that I had no idea about. So this is what I learned. Now I know the Zorba's Dance from the song that came out probably a decade or two ago called Zorba's Dance, which was like a cartoon sort of video. I might link it below if anyone remembers it. Um, so that's really where my first introduction to it came in. And then I've seen it since then, performed a lot through movies and TV shows where the people are usually Greek or a Greek wedding. I think they do it at Greek weddings a lot. Um, so that's how I knew about it. And then when I researched into it, I learnt its correct name, which is actually the Sirtaki, which comes from the word Sirto, which means to drag. So there's a lot of dragging of the feet and the dance itself is performed with 
in usually lines or in circles where individuals next to each other hold their hands on each other's shoulders and dance the steps, starting in a slow pace and working up to a very fast pace. What was also cool is that I found out that in 2012, um, there was a Guinness World Record broken by the amount of people involved in dancing a sirtaki and they danced for five minutes by the sea and there was 5,614 people connected all together doing this dance, which I think would be wild to see footage of. Like imagine if you had a little drone flying across the ocean and looking back at the coast where there's this massive line of people all dancing the sirtaki to the music from Zorba the Greek. I think that would be very impressive to see and yeah, good on, good on the people of Greece for getting together to do that what a community event um, so yeah I really wanted to celebrate that by putting the Zorba's dance here against the windmills of Mykonos and as you can see I just chose to do a man and a woman dancing in front of it I'm picturing it sunset um, so I tried to keep the colors sort of suggesting that sunset time and I'm just picturing that mood of being by the ocean, having those soft windmills behind you and yeah, and just dancing to some Greek music. I really became obsessed with these color choices here. I tried to use a really minimal palette and I just had a bit of carmine red, a little bit of ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna and then just white. So I used the white to dull all those colors down wherever I needed to and create a really pastel soft look and then kept the red quite bold in areas. So I really loved working with this soft color palette. And these are the gouache paints that I'm using here, the Holbein gouache. And I am just loving that. The more and more I get used to using it, the more I'm choosing to work with those rather than my watercolors, which is a little bit different for me. Uh, but yeah, I'm really loving the process. So I'm not about to stop. Um, I yeah kept it simple. And then I thought I would try and reflect some of that color across on the right hand page. So my days of the week, my little titles for Monday to Sunday, I've just done a little bit of a peachy sort of color from that sunset sky and just done a little background ready for me to write on in a minute. And now that I've written in all the title days and the dates, I felt it was lacking something on that left hand side down the bottom. So I thought it might be cool to include the word Mykonos and any excuse to do some calligraphy I'm all about. So I just got my brush pen, my Fudanuske brush pen and wrote the word Mykonos, but with the M inside some washi tape. And the washi tape that I had was gold. So we knew it was gonna add some fun to the spread, but it's also got a pattern on it that looks really, really similar to the Greek meander or the Greek key that I have mentioned in my previous bullet journal setup video. Um, so this meander is a pattern that's like one continuous line that goes round and around all the way along. And it's very, a very traditionally Greek um, pattern. So I thought it'd be cool to include that here in some washi tape around the title. And then this page was finished. Now this next page, I absolutely had to put into the bullet journal setup somehow because it is so important to Western civilization as we know it. Now the Greeks have founded so many things and we can thank them for so much. So philosophy is a big one. And so I thought I would put three Greek, very famous philosophers here on this page. So the top one I'm doing is Socrates, who was born in 470 BC and then died in 399 BC, making him around about 71 years old. He was from Athens and although he is incredibly famous. All the accounts of him haven't actually come from written texts by him. They've all been explored through his student, which is Plato. So Plato is the next Greek, ancient Greek philosopher that I have decided to draw on this page. I've drawn him just beneath Socrates. And what's interesting about Plato is that he created the Academy, which is the first institution of higher learning in the Western world. It was founded in Athens in 387 BC by Plato himself. So I just cannot believe that universities or colleges have been around because of these guys for almost two and a half thousand years. It's insane. And interestingly, Aristotle, who is my next drawing on the right side of Plato, studied there for 20 years. 
So all these very famous names that I've heard a lot throughout the years um, are actually all quite interconnected. Um, and I found that really cool. And the thought of joining them together with a triangle came into my brain because of Pythagoras, which is another ancient Greek philosopher who created the whole Pythagorean theorem where you work out the area of the sides that are equal to the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. So this, this even in itself, this equation, I don't remember ever understanding at school. And now that I'm a fully grown adult, I can actually comprehend it. And when I was reading this, I was like, ah, oh, that all makes sense now. Why, why was that such a problem when I was at school? Um, so yes, thank you Pythagoras for clearing that up. And this is why I've decided to do some triangles across this page and just decorate it in that way. So I had to, had to pay tribute to these guys and philosophy in general in Greece. So we can also thank them for the birth of democracy as well. Um, so yeah, Greece is just full of the beginnings of so much of our foundations. And then the final thing I wanted to include on this page as well was a nice quote from Socrates. There was so many to choose from that I really like. Um, a couple of special mentions are, it is better to change an opinion than to persist in a wrong one, which I thought was really cool. And the other one was, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. I feel like I use those quotes in my everyday life. Um, but the one that I decided to go for, which was I think top of the pops and should always be remembered, the only true wisdom is knowing you know nothing. And with that, we will end this page here and move on to the next page. The next weekly spread, I decided to illustrate a place that I kind of want to move to now. It's called Ikaria, and it's the island that's one of the five blue zones of the world. Now, the blue zones are places where they live the longest. They've got the longest lifespans. And yeah, Ikaria looks amazing and sounds just such a nice way of life there. So they tend to live into their 90s, but I think the key is that they're not just living, they're actually sort of enjoying life right up until then. They're, they're still active and they don't suffer a lot from cancer or heart disease or depression or dementia. Um, just the quality of life sounds incredible. They tend to lead just like a simple village life and it's very different to the corporate ones that people would live in the city, having those modern stresses. Um, they take a siesta during the day and they socialize over homegrown glasses of wine regularly, which sounds right up my alley, hence why I would like to move there. Daytime sleeping, nighttime socializing and having a drink, <laughs> sounds brilliant. Um, I also love the thought of the Mediterranean diet, so I decided to include in my illustration, a scene of Ikaria, and then in the foreground, a little collection of like a Mediterranean typical dinner or something. So I've got a glass of red wine. I've got the olive oil, which is very, like a very famous staple in the Mediterranean diet. And then a Greek salad full of, you know, nutrient rich antioxidants, tomatoes and cucumber and feta cheese and olives, all the good stuff. I've actually become so obsessed with this Mediterranean diet that my entire month of dinners is going to be designed around a Mediterranean diet. So we're gonna try that for a month at our house and see how it goes. Just the thought of being able to prolong your life and prolong it in a really healthy way um, by eating fish and vegetables, limiting meat, um, Wine is fine. I probably limit alcohol as well. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of wine here and there, lots of olive oil and fresh um, vegetables and fruits and beans, a lot of beans. So I'm excited for this month ahead of eating. <laughs> I tried to keep this one really simple with the way I drew it. I just used my Pigma Microns to line out the actual shape of everything. And then when I saw how blank it was and how much it could really use some color, that's when I decided to go in with colored pencils and a little bit of water-based marker. Um, now I don't particularly love the amount of color on it. Um, I think it's just because I'm so used to doing plain black and gold spreads that it's kind of hard for me to get excited about a color one now. 
Um, so yeah, but this one just didn't, didn't really work for me. Um, but it does, I think, display the idea that I was going for that blue zone and very healthy and fresh. And it gives me that idea. So I think that part is a win. And I also added that little Greek meander around the edge of the table. Not the greatest perspective, but it just adds another little feature of Greece that I wanted to show. And that's how this page turned out. And now we're on to our final page of the setup for July. And on this final spread for the weeklies, I decided to illustrate the entire Greek alphabet. I was a bit upset that I didn't get to do it in the first part of the setup, but I did want to explore it because it just deserved to be here. The Greek language is one of the oldest spoken languages in Europe since it's been spoken for more than 3000 years. So it's extremely important and I just love Greek letters as well. Um, so that's why I've illustrated those on this page. I've tried to make it as if they uh, have been carved into marble, hence the cracking as the dividers for each day. Um, I'm just using my brush pen again and every time I'm doing a downstroke, I'm doing more pressure on my pen and then an upstroke is less pressure. That's my general rule of thumb for when you're working with any lettering that you want to look a little bit fancy. So alphabet come from the Greek word alpha and beta. There you go. Now there was my reference to my big fat Greek wedding again. The dad always says how most English words are derived from a Greek word initially. And I can officially say that he is right. I didn't realize it, but over 150,000 English words uh, have come directly from Greek. Um, so words like economy, academy, paradise, school, poem, decade. They're some examples, but they are exactly the Greek word and we use them in regular English language. So there you go. And then to finish off this spread, I'm just using a little bit of gray marker and some gold, just to add a little touch of something there. And I'm sure you realize that I also made another mistake on my page and I went all the way through to Sunday. It's something I seem to always do, but just to fix it, I just went over the top with my white gel pen and then she was finished. So this is the final flip through of the completed weeklies for July. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Greece. Please leave your comments down below with which country you'd like to see based on the choices that I gave at the beginning of this video. And don't forget to come back to the channel next week for my video that I create for reaching 20K subscribers, where I will be releasing the details of a giveaway. So I will see you then. Thank you for watching and have a great week. Bye-bye.